going to be your warm up. So we're going to start with some supine knee circles. So we're going to start all the way down on the back. Give yourself a nice big hug, pull the knees into the chest. A few pause here for three to four breaths. Then you can put your hands right on your knees, and we're just making little circles with the knees as little or as big as you really want. Just so lubricate the lumbar spine and to give your low back a nice massage. You do a few on one side, and then you're going to come to a rest in the middle, and then go to the opposite side. From there, we're going into our spinal twist, so we're going to plant either cross the knees all the way over, or you can plant the feet first and then cross. But your knees want to go to one side, and the upper body is going to go to the opposite side. We're turning the head and opening up the opposite arm. We're going to take a couple breaths there, bring it back in the center, and then switch sides. You'll do this twice through. The second time you have the option to point one leg across the opposite leg over the knees are going to fall towards the planted leg. Get a little bit deeper into that spinal twist. And back up, uncross legs, recross, and then it fall towards the planted leg. And then we come up from here. We're going to roll on over onto our bellies. From here, press the hands into the floor and press all the way up into our up dog. From here, this is just getting your spine mobility. So from here, we're going to curve through the spine, drive the hips backwards, extend the arms on the front so we do the child's pose. This one's going to be dynamic, so we're going to roll through from up dog to child's pose a few times, as slow or as quick as you want. Again, it's just to get that spinal mobility. So as you go into child's pose, you can curve through the spine here. As we bring it up, going up to up dog, curve through the spine, roll up the shoulders, drop the hips, lift the chin, and then press the shoulders down and lift the chest to the very end. After a few of those, we're going to bring it into cat cow. So you're going to start in that tabletop position. We're going to drop the belly down, lift the chin and the chest and the hips, and then curve through the spine, pressing through the shoulders. Pausing in each second, in each position to breathe as we go. Last one will be our bear plank to down dog. So for this one, you're going to tuck the toes under. This is your bear plank, and then we're going to shift back into down dog. So we're working the range of motion in the shoulders and in the hips a little bit more. You'll feel this one in the hamstrings as well as the glutes. For about 30 seconds there, and we're going to bring it down to the floor. This is core circuit number one. We have crunches, side to side heel touches, and then our supine bent knee heel taps. So you're going to start on the floor, hips, knees, and toes are in line. You can lay on back. For all three of these, you want to pull the belly button into the spine to glue the low back and the floor. If we feel like we have a hole or a space in between our back and the floor, lift your hips up, tuck the pelvis, and try and glue the belly button or glue the low back to the floor by pulling the belly button in. So the first one is our crunches. You can either do the hands by behind the head or out by the side or on the hips, it's up to you. I'm gonna show you them when they're along the side here. So you're gonna pull that belly button in and peel the shoulder blades off the floor, pause at the top and then lower back down. One, two, three, keeping that low back on the floor the whole time. So that's the focus. So we go up, pause, one, two, three. From here at the end of our last crunch, we're gonna go side to side like a windshield wiper. So we're reaching for the opposite heel. Again, that low back stays on the floor the whole time. We're trying to keep the neck nice and long and loose. So you should feel that one on your sides here. From there, lay back down. Knees come up over the hips. We're gonna flex the feet, still keeping the low back in the floor. I'm gonna do this with my hands behind the head so you can see the first time. You're just lowering the heels down to the floor while keeping the hips down. So we're gonna keep the palms pressing into the floor. We're gonna start with the knees stacked over the hips. Low back stays on the floor. We lower the legs down, tap the heels, and then bring it back up. Again, lower, tap, and bring it back up. So the first step we want to do nice and slow, make sure that everything's activated. This is core circuit number two. So we're going to start with our bare plank knee lifts and then our tabletop alternating reach and our tabletop alternating leg extension. So we're going to start in our tabletop position, hands are stacked underneath the shoulders, knees are underneath the hips. 
From here we want to pull the belly button in, we want a nice flat spine from the top of the head all the way out through the tailbone. So we don't want to dip and we don't want to be arched. We want to find that nice tabletop position and then pull that lower abdominal into the belly to support the low back here. From here we're going to tuck the toes under, this is our bare plank knee lifts. We're just lifting the knees off the floor about an inch and then lower back down. Again, lift, pause, and back down. The goal here is to keep everything the same. So we're working the quads a little bit, but the primary focus is on keeping that core stable. After your set of bare plank knee lifts, you're going into your tabletop alternative reach. So you're going to hold on to this position. You can relax the feet or keep them tucked under. It's up to you. But keep that abdominal engaged. We're going out and then down. And then the left arm's going out and down. So anytime we have a plank exercise, we want to make sure that we're not moving anything else as we go. Option for this one too, you can also mix it up. You can reach long and then bring it back in. Reach long and bring it back in. Again, goal is to keep the core stable as much as you can. The last one is our tabletop alternating leg extension. So still pressing those shoulders down, belly button pulls in. We extend one leg all the way back. We're thinking about the heel going up to the sky and out to the back wall and then bringing it back in, trying not to shift the weight. We're not trying not to show that we're shifting weight as we go from side to side. Again, lower back is supported by that belly button and we're trying not to move. So it's all about that stability as we go. We're gonna move on to our functional movement circuit number one. This is for your lower body. So this has good mornings, body weight squats, and static lunges. So for your good morning, this is your hinge movement. So your feet are going to start underneath your hips, shoulders are down and back, chest is lifted, belly button pulls in, hands are going to be behind the head. From the side, we look like this. Very first thing we do anytime we do a hinge is we drive the hips backwards to shift the weight into the heels, and then we pull the belly button in to support the low back. We're going to continue that hinge position as you lower down like a tabletop, reaching your buttocks to the opposite wall, and elongating through the spine and the top of the head. From here, you're going to press through the heels and squeeze the glutes at the very top. So hips, core, hinge, pause at the bottom, you'll feel a stretch all the way through the hamstrings, and then press and squeeze. From there, we go into our body weight squats. So the same two movements started. We drive the hips backwards to shift the weight to the heels, pull the belly button into the spine, and then we're going to bend our knees this time. As we bend, we want to make sure that the knees are going beyond the toes. We're nice and lifted in the chest. We press the heels and squeeze the glutes at the top. So shift belly, knees, and squeeze. This is just your regular body weight squat. We have done other squats in orange theory with the turned out position. But for this one, you do want to make sure that the feet are right underneath the hips the whole time. From there, we go into our static lunge. So our static lunge, we're going to do both sides. We're going to find the position first by stepping one foot back, as if we were stepping into a reverse lunge. So feet are underneath the hips. So we step one leg back. We're going to hold this position. So back heel is going to be lifted, front leg or front heel is going to be planted on the floor. Roll the shoulders down and back. Put your hands on your hips or on the front. Whatever feels comfortable to you. Comfortable to you. We're going to lower down here into our lunge, dropping that knee straight underneath our shoulder, and then bringing it back up to center, and repeat. So we lunge and center. So we're not moving the feet, we're just working on the alignment of hips, knees, and toes. Our focus is forward, and we're working on that range of motion, that stability. From there, we'll switch legs, and you'll do the opposite side. Again, hips, knees, and toes in line. As you step backward, Make sure that the foot is in that same line so we're not crossing it over. You want a little bit of space in between the legs so that we're on train tracks and we're just going down and up. Again, take your time, especially in the first couple of days, to really work on that range of motion and work on the alignment. What we don't want to see is wobbling knees down and wobbling knees up. If we are wobbling, just slow it down a little bit more. Think about resisting on the way down and focusing on that alignment and then bringing it back up with that alignment as well. That's functional movement circuit number one. This is your functional movement circuit number two. This is for your upper body. So we have a chest press, a low row, and then our um, trunk rotation. 
So we're going to start our chest press up just like we did for our crunches with the low back on the floor, hips, knees, and toes in line. Dumbbells are going to be stacked right over the shoulders. We want to make sure that we're supporting that load from underneath. So as we are lowering down, we're making sure that low belly button folds in, or the belly button folds in to keep the low back on the floor. Elbows are coming out wide. We're going to tap them to this floor and then press straight up and squeeze the head towards. So we have one, two, three, drive and pause. One, two, three, drive and pause. If at any time you feel wobbly, just rest up top, try and reset, pull the belly button in. It's probably because your shoulder girdle is not engaged as much, so you want to think about pressing up and activating through the shoulders. And then holding that as we lower down, press and pause. From there, we're going to go into our lower row. So you're going to come all the way up to your feet. Your hip hinge position, feet are underneath the hips. We bend the knees and we hinge at the waist. Dumbbells come straight down. We pull the belly button in to support the low back. It looks like here. So we're standing, we bend, hinge, dumbbells down, and then pull that belly button in to support that low back. Press the shoulders down at the same time, elbows slice in right on either side of the rib cage, pause at the top, and then they come right back down underneath the shoulders. So we pull up and lower. You should feel this one in your lats, right in your mid back, on either side, either side of your spine. That hip hinge position is also an isometric hold position. So it's active in the hamstrings, it's active in the core, it's active in the back as well. We also want to think about pressing the shoulder down, keeping a nice long neck. So from there, we're going to go into our trunk rotation. You can do this one without a dumbbell at first to make sure that we're stable, and then you can add your light weight and then work up to your heavier weight. For no weight, we're going to start with our hands right in front of us, press the shoulders down. So we want open shoulders here, and then lift them underneath. Our palms are together. Feet are planted just above the knees. We're going to rotate as far as we can to one side, and then back to center. We'll rotate to the opposite side, and back to center. So from the side, it looks like this. We keep everything together. We rotate, center, rotate, and center. So we're trying to keep the hips down still, and we're working that rotation from the core. So you'll have 10 to over there to start, and then you'll build it off of that. And that is your functional movement circle, circuit number two. So you made it, we're moving on to your cool down. So your cool down is gonna stay the same. It is a full body cool down. It starts with a chest stretch. Each one of these, we wanna roll those shoulders down and back, and move these out of the way. Roll those shoulders down and back, put the posture in place. Make sure that we have proper alignment. So feet are underneath the hips. We open the elbows up nice and wide into our chest stretch. We take about three, four, maybe even five breaths here. And then extend the arms. Bring the right arm across super straight. Hook it with the left. Give yourself a nice big hug. You feel this one in the shoulders. Opening up the arms. The left arm comes across super straight. Hook it with the right. Give yourself a nice big hug. And then opening up the arms. Right arm comes up behind the head, bending the elbow, left arm comes up and over for a tricep stretch assist. Think about pressing the elbow into the palm so that you can stretch in the tricep. Switch arms. And then into your overhead reach. So interlace the fingers and press them forward and then up. Lift up out of the hips and then stretch over to one side. We want to keep the side of the body that we're getting away from nice and open, so try not to ram or open too much. It's just straight to the side, all the way up and to the opposite side. And bring it back together, opening up the arms, holding on to the top of the foot or the, where the laces of the shoe would be. Pull the belly button in, shoulders and hips stay nice and square. And then we want to tuck the pelvis to bring the foot together so that the knees are together. And then we're pulling everything in. That's going to get a little bit deeper into that quad versus oof, on over, something like this. So pull it all in nice and tight together. Switch sides. And shoulders, are, shoulders and hips are square. Belly button pulls in. Feet come underneath the hips before we reach for the toes. High neck and shoulders are nice and loose. You want the weight on the balls of your feet for this one. 
You can bend the knees elongate through the lower spine, lift through the hips up to the ceiling. Make this one dynamic by bending and stretching the knees, get a little bit deeper in each side of that range of motion. And then from here, you'll walk your hands and feet out to your up dog position. Stretching out the core. And then you'll finish out with a child's pose. So drop this backwards one more time. Work the shoulder range of motion. Take a few nice deep breaths here because it feels really good. It's a very restorative pose. And then walk your hands up. And you're good to go.